because of a conversation. So this is the nature of knowledge. You know, you have a, we have a lot of knowledge inside us. And it, kind of just, it doesn't even sit in there. Actually, it doesn't exist. It, neurologically speaking, it doesn't exist until that set of neuro, neurons fire. Then it exists. But prior to that, it's just a potential sitting in the back. See, I'm using the word sitting again. It doesn't sit. It's in the background. Yeah? And then in conversation, something gets said, and that particular neuronal pattern fires because there's been a connection, a stimulus, a trigger, whatever you want to call it. And, oh, I remember that. Boom. So that's, that's the nature of human memory, but that's not the story I wanted to tell you. <laughs> so this is the story. It's straight out of the elusive obvious, and it's Moshe Feldenkrais reflecting on what it was like when he began to do awareness through movement. So uh, I'm paraphrasing, but please go and read it. It's the very first couple of paragraphs in the Introduction to Awareness Through Movement chapter. Maybe we'll put it online and you can read it. So he says, you know, uh, initially when I started to do awareness through movement, he said, I, was, I observed myself as you would any object moving. So you can see how this segment's been inspired by that. You, know, you hold an object, you feel an object, it's outside. So he was observing himself in that fashion. And he says, I wasn't particularly interested in the what of any movement. I was more interested in the how. How, how does that happen? I go to lift an arm. He didn't care whether it was lifting the arm or turning the head or contracting the abdomen. He didn't care. He was more interested in how is that happening? What is happening inside me as I make that movement? And he said that that was very satisfying for him. It's a very interesting world when you go into that internal space. And then he said, one day a friend came along and he became interested in what he was doing. So the friend asked, what are you doing? He said, um, this and this. And he said, I'd like to join in. Can you show me how? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's like the person sitting next to you at a concert. It's a really quiet moment. It's like a very beautiful Schubert little, you know, violin can share it. It's the quietest man. He goes, what notes he playing? Shut up. No, no, no. Is that a minor chord or a, what is that, a minor or a major? Shut up. <laughs> Let me enjoy this. So you see that when Feldenkrais was asked that question, it was a major disturbance because then he had to take something that was very, I'll use this word intentionally, very ephemeral, observing this internal, you've done a little bit of this, you know, listening to the music, what bodily sensations come up? And then try to put it into words and then not only that, select what was important to communicate. Ay, ay, ya. He says, he, to say it nicely, he says, I, you know, I, I just wanted that person to go away. <laughs> just go away. Leave me alone. Don't ask. But you see, that is how awareness through movement lessons started. Yeah? There, is a, there is, you know, this guy moving along the floor, doing any intentional movement that he chooses and paying attention to the experiences that arise and asking a question. Oh, when I do that, I feel this. What happens if I do that? And, oh, I feel that. That's what awareness and movement is. That's its roots right back down. It, it, the roots are very experiential. Does that make sense? And then, you know, he started to find connections. And of course, things never arise in isolation, out of context. He had, um, is this okay to go, is, is this okay? This is going to be a, little, a quick little potted history. For those of you who have read the book, close your ears. Yeah. So, you know, he, he was born into a Hasidic family. And in a Jewish family, learning is everything. 
and reverence for God, not, not in that, you know, oh my God, hell and brimstone, but in, in Hasidism, you see God manifest in everything. Everything is manifest with God, the good and the bad. So can you see that if you've grown up with that idea that learning is the savior of the world, which it is, and that God is manifest in everything, then, of course, you carry that with you. and So that has become a part of the method, that you can find useful information in everything. Everything can be used, known about, to lead a better life. That's kind of like God manifest in everything. There's something worthwhile in everything that you do, so long as it doesn't kill you. Yeah? And then he travels along, and of course, he, he lands in Palestine, and there he is, and he's a worker. And there's this attitude of, um, you know, Zionism, this notion of anarchy, that people can gather together and do something and then disband, and then gather together and do something and disband. Yeah, there's this coming together, there's this kind of social milieu that's happening. And he, he's, he's a part of that. He's a part of creating a brand new community, a brand new state. Can you see that that has found its way into the method? The muscles come together, you do something, and then you just let it go. The muscles come together, you do something else, and you let it go. You see there's this coming together and releasing, and it really is part of neurological thinking. It's part of his thinking. And then he goes on, and he starts to study mathematics, and he starts to study engineering, and he starts to study judo. Can you see how many influences are coming in on this? And then he's in London, and he encounters this whole new world of the Alexander Technique, and then the Gurdjieffian group, esoteric knowledge, uh, another somatic approach. And he's, he's swimming. You know, he's swimming in this big field. And out of that crystallizes this particular approach, which is a little bit different to other approaches, but there's a lot of similarities, so you can't really give it a clear boundary. But it's very distinct. Okay. And th th that's everything that informs awareness through movement lessons. So what I'm doing here with you, you know, when I demonstrate on the skeleton and I demonstrate with somebody else, that's just doing the same thing, adding other pieces of information that will give you clarity, that will make sense in a short period of time because his development was over a few more years. <laughs> that will make sense. We're trying to make sense in a short period of time what took a particular one chap to cobble together. And just like musical pieces, Lessons have a design and a structure which you need to learn how to play. It's not that complicated to play them. It might seem more complicated because of the nature of the way I'm presenting to you. Oh, then this happens over here and this anatomy and whatever. To actually teach the lessons, not that hard to play. They're composed of what you'd call everyday movements. That's what it is. Yes, Anna. Um, I was thinking as you were talking about as you were talking about Moshe Feldenkrais, I thought that perhaps it's also with us we bring everything that you we've do. had it, our diversity to it as well, mm. and it then becomes it a becomes thing again. it becomes. Um, I'll use this metaphor because Feldenkrais used the metaphor. You're writing the same script, but it's your handwriting. So it's an inter not an interpretation. Yes, it is an interpretation. It's an interpretation. Everything we do is an interpretation. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. So this is, this is the metaphor that he used. So, you know, when you're writing an English script, all of us in this room can read English script. So that's what you're learning as you're learning the Feldenkrais method. You're learning, metaphorically speaking, oh, this is an English script. This is how I read an English script. But if you then take the handwriting analogy, you're writing in an English script, but the handwriting is yours. Mm. Mm. So someone looking goes, oh, yeah, that's English. That's Feldenkrais method. I know that. But it's uniquely your way of doing 
the Feldenkrais method, which will, of course, have all of the, your own swimming pool <laughs> yes, yeah. going on in it. <laughs> Why is it breaststroke? Yeah, go on. <laughs> all right, so, so that's... Uh, so uh, that's where you are in the process now. You're like Moshe Feldenkrais, and rather than just say, okay, lie on the floor for an hour, I'll, I'll come back in an hour, see what you come up with. And rather than doing that, um, you listen to a piece of music. You explore a, a, a movement design. So, yeah, that's what you're doing. But the process, you're just like him more interested in the how because the what is already presented to you. I've presented the what. You are now very interested in the how. Yeah. And I'm trying to give you little maps to see for some of you whether I sh if I show it this way, the following through of the how becomes easier. If I show you a different kind of a map, Oh, the interest in the how is kindled again. Yeah? So some of you will need different ways of getting interested or staying with or understanding the how. And that's all I'm doing, really. All right. Now, in this next lesson, there is a particular configuration that is used. And rather than trying to you know, do this and spend five minutes trying to get you give you a clear impression of what that is. It's just quicker to show you on the skeleton. Well, actually, maybe not. <laughs> Why? Could someone lie on their tummy, please? Why do I? Yeah, someone lie on their tummy. Yeah, anybody. Anybody who has a shoulder blade and an arm. <laughs> That's good. All right. Ah, Mia, is that you, Mia? Yes. Yay! Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. Uh, please turn your head to the left. Yeah, that's nice. Now, put this hand into a push ups position. There we go. Now, can you see that as soon as this hand lands on the ground here like this, you now have a shape that's been made. There's this like this little gap here into the shoulder, to the front of the chest, along the floor, and yeah, there's a lot of space in there. There's enough space for me to go, where is your nose? Is that your nose? Yeah? <laughs> Can you bring your nose into the space? That's it, stop, come back. Now, that's the beginning of the lesson. <laughs> I didn't think of that until you, we were interacting together, Mia, and that's, sorry, that, that never would have happened with a skeleton. <laughs> huh? So that's what's nice about working with people. You never know what's about to happen. But so, can, do you, can you feel that shape? If I do this, you know, if I go like this, and then along here, and then here, and then make a noise, yeah, can you sense that shape there? That's good. Yeah, that's, we'll call that the gap. The gap. Or the tunnel. Which would you prefer, tunnel or gap? The gap. Okay, so we'll call that the gap. Thank you very much, Mia. I wish there was more, but that's it. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> okay, so please go and find your space on the floor and lie on your tummy. <laughs> 